How's it going you guys? So in this video, I'm just going to be uncovering one of the greatest misunderstandings in regard to anxiety and panic attacks. <clears throat> so recently I got a uh, comment on one of my videos talking about how to kill a panic attack dead in its tracks. And basically in that video, um, I said you need to let go of the resistance you need to quit fighting the panic attack and it will go away every single time. And you know, a lot of people don't realize I actually suffered from severe uh, panic disorder and generalized anxiety, dis and anxiety disorder for about two years. And I healed it all on my own. Um, it turns out that there was a physical cause underlying um, which was causing my general feeling of uh, anxiety and general feelings of lethargy but panic attacks themselves no matter how anxious you're feeling can be controlled um, and let me explain so first of all the comment from the guy it, it was a long paragraph but basically he was saying that um, his panic attack hurts too much for him to just accept the panic attack and he says no matter how much I accept the panic attack the pain is still going to be there. Sorry about the lighting, you guys. It's impossible to get this lighting perfect, okay? But it's the information in this video that should matter, not the lighting. Anyway, he says, the pain of the, of the panic attack. He says, I can't, no matter how much I accept the pain, uh, no, no matter how much I accept the panic, um, it doesn't stop the pain. And this is actually an oxymoron. The problem here is not that he can't accept the panic, it's that he doesn't actually understand what it means to accept the panic attack, to go with the panic attack, to stop fighting the panic attack. He says, um, no matter how much I try to stop fighting the panic attack, the pain is inevitable and the pain is still going to happen. And then he says, oh, it's excruciating pain. You don't understand, basically. He, said, he started off his comment, his very first comment, by saying, uh, I, guess some people, I guess some people are different than others. I guess some people's panic attacks are, are worse than others or are different than others. Basically, this guy is um, coming from a defeatist mindset, and he doesn't actually want to try. I know this because when people say, oh, sure, you might have cured your psoriasis using a paleo diet, but, you know, everyone is different. Usually those people haven't actually tried the paleo diet to cure their psoriasis. Or people, usually they, try, they say, oh, you know what, everyone's different. Um, and that may work for you, but it probably won't work for me. They say that because they don't want to try it. Because for whatever reason, the method that I use to cure my illness or whatever um, is it's so uncomfortable for them to to change that they'd rather not even try they'd rather just discredit it right away and say oh it probably worked for you but not for me so this person went on to say oh can you just give me some supplement advice <laughs> and like yeah right away I'll just say holy basil I'll say L-theanine I will say uh, gynostemma. Gynostemma is very underrated. Most people don't even know what it is. The best gynostemma you can buy is from Hyperion Herbs, ran by one of my favorite uh, old school like herbalist health gurus, uh, Brandon Gilbert on YouTube. Look him up. Gynostemma is amazing. It's life changing. Um, but uh, there's even nutritional strategies that work very well. Usually people are, they're eating what they think is a healthy diet, but they're not actually eating a healthy diet in reality. And they're probably suffering from food intolerances and probably um, not getting enough of the right foods for them. Might be eating too much fiber and plant foods, which can actually uh, cause gut dysbiosis, which can cause gas and bloating, which can cause uh, breathlessness, which can trigger anxiety attacks. And this was one of the things that was causing my anxiety, was the high amounts of plant foods I was eating. Um, anyway, and also salt deficiency. A lot of people are scared of eating enough salt, and when they try to eat healthy, they remove all the processed foods that were high in sodium, 
and they actually create a uh, sodium deficiency that cannot be found with blood tests. It's intracellular hyponatremia. Anyway, um, so there's a lot of things that have to be addressed as far as what's causing anxiety. The, uh, one of the best books you can read is The Ultramind Solution by Dr. Mark Hyman, because in that book he explains the ins and outs of what causes all, all these mental issues and why psychiatry and medications and things are not the answer. Um, he explains the flaws in them. And he also lays out, he has a questionnaire, which you can download for free by searching for the Ultramind Solution uh, Companion Guide. And it has um, all sorts of questionnaires that you just answer the questions and it'll tell you what you might be deficient in. What nutrient are you lacking that can be causing your anxiety? And also he has a, a healthy eating plan that is scientifically valid by the greatest research which I personally um, don't follow and don't agree with, but it will help most people who don't know what is a healthy diet. Um, it's high in omega-3s, high in uh, fish and you know healthy fats, etc., etc. Anyway, he recommend he, he that that test and his recommendations can help you figure out: Am I having GABA-related problems? Am I having problems with serotonin and with dopamine? You have to find the root cause. You can't just be like, oh, what supplements do you recommend? You know, you can take holy basil. That helped me, but it didn't help me with panic attacks, okay? Actually, I had what you call a nocebo effect. When you have panic disorder, everything, you know, can trigger a panic attack. For me, um, I was so scared of taking a supplement that can increase my anxiety that I actually would create panic attacks um, from everything I took. Uh, I actually would take a B vitamin and I was like, oh god, I hope this doesn't cause an anxiety attack. I take it and I'd be like, oh shit, I, my breathing, oh no, I, I'm having a panic attack. And within like five minutes of taking the B vitamin, I placeboed myself into having a panic attack. This is why supplements are probably like like again I'm a huge advocate of natural medicine but with panic disorder it's a mind thing the book you need to read um, first of all you need to understand the fight-or-flight response in order for you to understand why I choose the method that I do of non-resistance second of all read the book the power of neuroplasticity I forgot the guy's name um, but I will make a video review on it later, so subscribe for the review of this book. Essentially, you have to understand why you don't believe that you can overcome your panic attack. you got to understand wh how you've started getting panic attacks in the first place. Basically, it's patterns of thoughts that start to uh, create um, neural pathways in your brain. Essentially, your brain starts to make uh, make these thought patterns of panic and fear and anxiety a natural default state for you. And the more you think them, the more solidified these habits become. And so the key is to change your approach and change your thoughts entirely. Um, essentially, instead of resisting the panic attack, instead of like uh, freaking out about the pain, oh no, I don't want to experience the pain. I don't want to have a panic attack. Oh no, it's starting. I'm having a panic attack. I don't want to have a panic attack. I don't want to have pain. I got to stop it. I got to change my breathing. I got to take chamomile. I've got to take holy basil. I got to find a supplement. Instead of that, the best thing you can do is welcome the panic attack. You have to completely have the opposite approach. Einstein said, you cannot solve a problem by the same mindset in which it was created. Panic attacks are created by fear. So it's the fight or flight response, this classic stress response, 101, where you say, um, so essentially the stress response, it's always the same. Uh, you see a threat, you're, you, you, you determine that there is some kind of threat. In your case, the pain of the anxiety attack, the pain of the panic attack, that is the threat and you're trying to avoid the threat, trying to run away from it. But the very act of 
running away from the threat or resisting the threat or trying to stop the threat or wanting, wanting the threat to go away is actually causing the threat to get worse. And that's actually, paradoxically, was triggering the panic attack in the first place. And so the more that you try, that you, that you think about how bad the pain is and try to run away from the pain, um, the, the worse it's going to get. And so the thing is, you should not, like, shouldn't be like, oh, like, the pain is so hard, how can I just accept it? Like, just, like, accept the fact that you're going to feel pain. Because that's the only way it's going to go away. Um, supplements might be able to kind of like relax you a little bit, uh, but they're not going to completely remove your panic attack. There are some like GABA combined with magnesium and theanine, uh, but it'll probably put you to sleep and it'll just make you feel too relaxed. There's nothing that's going to really like give you what you want other than solving the actual cause. And I'm telling you, no matter what nutrient you might be deficient in, um, your uh, your mindset is flawed when when you're saying uh, no matter how much I try to stop stop the panic attack or no matter how much I try to accept the panic attack uh, it doesn't stop the pain well listen if you just welcome the pain and you say all right uh, here we go another panic attack let's go you know come on panic like I actually started to try to induce panic attacks for me that's what I started doing. I was like, all right, let's have a panic attack. You know, I'm feeling great right now. Let's see if I can induce a panic attack. And when I started doing that, I was like, okay, let's go. And I would start to hyperventilate on purpose. And, you know, I started feeling more panicky and, and anxious, but I couldn't induce a panic attack no matter how hard I tried. Do you know why? It's because I was purposely trying to cause a panic attack. I was welcoming it. And when I got to that stage, of of embracing the panic attack it never came back ever and that was exactly what i did to remove the panic the pro the reason why uh so many people hear this and then they're like oh no like they're resisting me they're like oh no there's no way like no maybe you're just different maybe my panic attack is different maybe i have a disease no that's not it at all i was clinically diagnosed with panic disorder and generalized anxiety disorder and for two years, I dealt with that until I just said, well, damn, I'm tired. I was calling the, uh, the, I called an ambulance one day. I used to go to the emergency room on a regular basis. So if the first thing you got to do is completely embrace it and welcome the panic and it will never come back. And if you do this and you start to realize that you can actually put this strategy into everything, so, exact, for, so for example, I used to be really anxious when I was uh, going to go to school and, 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 uh, and class or whatever. Or I was anxious when I was going to give a speech to a bunch of people. Um, you know, or I used to be, or for a while I was anxious when I would go on dates with girls. Um, just for a little bit, right? What I started to do was I, was, I, I realized if I expect it to go, if I just, if I welcome the chaos, I'm like, all right, What's the worst thing can happen? Well, there's a lot of bad things can happen. I'm like, all right, let's let's see. I was starting to become excited. I tried to cultivate the welcoming of the crazy shit. I I I purposely started to. I didn't shower for like a, a month just because I wanted to become numb to the judgments of other people to completely kill any social anxiety that might happen. That's how I can talk to a damn camera, like a crazy person, right? Talking to myself, talking to a camera. I'm talking to you guys, right? Because I welcomed the chaos, right? Most people are so self-conscious and they care so much about what other people think that they can't even like go a month without showering. They're like, well, well I have a job. Like, what if, what about my boss? They're going to all judge me and call me a caveman. Like, damn, honestly, because I've, I've, I've actually like like become strong, like actually ha built that mental strength. Um, I honestly cannot believe how fragile everyone is. Like, like, am I the only one who who real who realized the secret? Like, when you welcome the chaos, when you when you uh, embrace the possibility that things can go crazy, and you welcome it with happiness and excitement, you're excited. The shit, like, sit doing the same thing every single day is boring as hell. 
uh, you know, having anxiety attacks and these things to conquer was actually super fun for me. Because now that I conquer the anxiety, like, I don't have anything, any challenge as awesome as that, as, as uh, exciting as that. And I was very excited to try new methods of trying to remove the panic. And it was that ex excitement for, for experimentation and the enjoyment now. I started to enjoy panic attacks. I was like, oh great, I wonder if that chamomile is going to work now. I wonder if uh, this breathing exercise, the, the square breathing or the Bokura method or whatever that is, you know, the, the Wim Hof method, uh, the cold shower, you know, to disrupt the panic attack. I wonder if these methods are going to help me this time, right? And I became excited for it. And conversely, that's also how to cure insomnia. So many people, they're like, oh, I can't sleep. Fight the insomnia is what they do. Falling asleep is like falling in love. And um, panic attack is caused by that resistance. Insomnia, a lot of times, is caused by that resistance. But usually, it's just poor sleep hygiene. It's usually salt deficiency, uh, or hypoglycemia, or food intolerance, um, and a lack of darkness, a lack of um, mental peace. People are, are so stressed about not sleeping that they don't sleep. <laughs> For me, I just said, fuck it, like, I'm gonna just uh, run myself into the wall until I'm so tired that I have to sleep for at least four hours, right? Uh, but now that I'm doing a ketogenic diet, I don't have that problem. Uh, and using a sleep mask, putting earmuffs on, I don't have that problem at all. And then also putting my uh, thermostat on 68 degrees because the hu human beings actually, it's coldness that triggers sleep. People don't know that. Anyway, uh, yeah, so embrace the panic and stop being a fragile, like, you know, like stop. Just, just do it. Stop. Acting, stop thinking like, oh, uh, I'm different. My shit's worse than yours. Cause, yeah, you're you're just you're never gonna solve your problem. Go ahead, try all the supplements in the world. The ones I recommended are some of the best: Gynosema, Holy Basil, L-theanine, GABA, and magnesium. But those are only gonna help you enough to where you can actually be so be calm enough to embrace a panic. Maybe they'll help you, but you still gotta have that method. You've gotta stop resisting it. And that's all there is to it. So um, there's not a lion that's out to try to eat you. Um, and the sooner that you realize that the panic attack is not going to kill you and the panic attack is nothing to fear and you stop fearing it, it that's exactly what's going to stop it. No more fear, no more panic. But uh, it's, a, it's a matter of mental weakness versus just like, hey, I'm going to die one day anyway. Panic attack's probably not going to kill me. You know, it, it's just funny to me. Like you're choosing to suffer. It, it's not even funny. It's sad. It's pathetic. Uh, you just have to make the choice, okay? And that's all there is to it. That's what I did, and that's what you're gonna have to do. So yeah, hope you uh, hope you guys see um, relief. So leave your question in the comments down below. I'll talk to you on the next video.